It's another Notebook Check Tech Review, and this time we've got two devices for you. We've got the iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus. And as usual, we're gonna go over the devices. We'll do a little bit of comparison of the two this time, but uh, what we generally like to do in this video is give you some of the test results, results we've done in our labs, and that includes things like performance, um, temperature, and battery life as well. There's loads more on a full reviews, uh, reviews on the website, but if you subscribe to this channel, you're gonna get these videos a few days before the English version of the review comes out on notebookcheck.net. My name's Chippy, thanks for watching, but let's get right into the video now, Notebook Check Tech Review of the iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus. So let's take a brief look at the design first, and then we'll go into some of the performance uh, reports and a bit of comparison between the two. Obviously there's the Plus on the left here, and the basic 6S on the right. 4.7 inches here, and 5.5 inches in, the, in terms of resolution 13 and 34 by 750 pixel resolution and 1920 by 1080, so that's a full HD display there. Designs are pretty much the same, in fact, uh, almost exactly the same apart from, of course, dimensions. So there's the lock button, volume up and down. On the bottom, you've got the uh, lightning port, the head headphone socket, single mono speaker, down facing, which uh, can be blocked fairly easily by the hand. And then on the other side, we've got the uh, SIM card slot here and power button there. Nothing on the top. And of course, you've got the uh, touch ID button, start button here. And so obviously there's some big differences in usability between the two. Obviously the, the uh, 6S is uh, much easier to access all the screen with the thumb. Although of course you have the double click to bring down the top level. Uh, the top third disappears and it reduces there so you can access that, which makes it a lot easier. It's actually half the screen going on the 6S uh, Plus there. One of the important new features of the uh, 6X and 6S Plus is uh, 3D touch, which is a pressure sensitive response to touch on the screen. So if we press hard on that, we get a, a sub menu on there. That doesn't happen on all apps, uh, but on some apps and more apps are starting to support it, you get uh, the ability to, to pull out sub functions of the main, the main uh, icon there. One thing it's uh, important to know is that the camera lens is raised on these. That's uh, about a millimeter uh, above the casing. So you'll have to bear that in mind when you're storing your, uh, your iPhone 6 Plus if you're wanting to preserve that, uh, that lens over time. So let's talk for a second about that, uh, that camera. 12 megapixel, 4K uh, recording capability, OIS on the Plus model. And in our, in our tests, um, well, it came out great quality, with great quality, but on closer inspection, when we zoomed into some of the photos we took, we saw a little bit uh, degraded quality on, on some of our images. C certainly the dynamic range and some of the uh, photos we took was a slightly, slightly less than on the, on the iPhone 6. Take a look at our full review though, because we've got some sample photos for you uh, comparing with the OnePlus 2, for example, the Xperia Z3 Plus and our uh, reference Canon, Canon ES 70D. So you'll be able to check out a number of photos, number of scenes that we've uh, taken a picture of for you. So it's the Apple A9 processor in both of these, 1.8 gigahertz clock, and it's a vast improvement over the previous uh, model. Let's uh, see if we can just run this Sun Spider uh, at the same time on both. Uh, slightly ahead on the uh, 6S there, but uh, the results are pretty amazing. That's 224. We've had it down to 214 milliseconds on the Sun Spider test there. So from the camera to the display, and it's a good story all around, our lab test results showed excellent brightness, excellent contrast. In fact, that contrast is uh, slightly better on the uh, 6S with a f over 1400 uh, uh, contrast ratio and the uh, 6S Plus with a, a slightly higher black level and a contrast ratio of 1 to 6, 7. But uh, all in all, excellent scores. Variation from colors, very low. Uh, to, and also, uh, if we look at the uh, RGB coverage range, 60% is pretty good and compares well with a lot of the other high-end phones with perhaps the uh, 6 Edge taking the lead there.
Now it's still a glossy display, although that uh, high brightness is really going to help with outdoor usage. Uh, but in direct sunlight, uh, really no level of brightness really compensates for the reflections you get off a, off a glossy screen. But in general, pretty good, usable outdoors, and certainly if you get uh, a shadow reflection rather than a, uh, a highlight reflection, it's going to be no problem with uh, readability at all. Now we've done a load of performance tests. Let's just take a look at a couple of them. The first one we're taking a look at here is uh, GFX Bench, which is a fairly heavyweight test over a long period of time. Uh, performance on both of these devices is, uh, well, pretty incredible actually, considering the size of them and almost unbelievable. And in fact, even over time, we did four tests here, uh, there was very little drop off in performance due to, to heating. If we look at some comparisons of uh, GFX Bench uh, related to the previous models, we see on the 6S a, an 87% improvement on the scores over the uh, iPhone 6. And on the Plus, we see a 76% uh, performance improvement. That's pretty impressive performance, uh, performance improvements over the previous generation. Taking a look at the Octane V2 scores, that uh, 6S scored 16,200. Now on the left here I've got the Surface Pro 3, which only actually comes in at 22,800. So you've definitely got uh, laptop level performance in terms of the Octane test here. And multiple runs don't seem to be uh, bringing that score down at all due to any sort of heat or thermal throttling. So also on the subject of heat, we put the uh, devices under load test and measured the uh, back and front with a Voltcraft uh, temperature monitor. It's an interesting result actually because the Plus gets hotter, uh, warmer, doesn't get hot, gets warmer than the 6S, uh, which kind of proves that both of these probably are packed as tight as they can be. Uh, there's a bigger battery in the iPhone uh, 6S, obviously more LED power to light the bigger screen, so that might be the reason it's getting warmer under low. But there's only a few degrees in it, and in fact the uh, 43.5 uh, maximum we measured on the back of the uh, 6S Plus isn't anything to worry about too much. It does get warm, but it doesn't get hot. So on the battery life, uh, we've got a 10.45 watt hour battery in the 6S Plus. And in the 6S, we've got a 6.9 watt hour battery. So obviously there's going to be differences in battery life here. So if you take a look at our test results, uh, in terms of idle, the 6S Plus can idle for 27 hours, 25 hours on the 6S, but it's the important uh, surfing over Wi-Fi, which is probably representative of the way most people are using it. And in fact, both of these devices come over, um, out at about eight hours and eight, yeah, eight and a half hours, eight and a quarter to eight and a half hours. Now, obviously the backlight on these devices is responsible for taking a lot of the battery power. And uh, on the 6S, there's gonna be less power taken by the LEDs on the, on the smaller device. So that's probably why we're getting a similar battery life figure for these two devices. So the 6S Plus screen side size really lends itself nicely to casual video watching. So the performance is there for uh, excellent uh, full screen performance. And in terms of battery life, you're gonna get on both devices around eight and a half, sorry, 11 and a half hours, uh, maybe a little bit more, maybe up to 12 hours on the 6S Plus. So that's certainly gonna keep you going on your intercontinental uh, flights. So our summary scores for the 6S, 89% for the 6S plus 88%. Um, the keyboard on the 6S plus, obviously slightly better, but we marked it a little bit down because of that uh, temperature uh, warming on the back and front that we measured during our load tests. But uh, in general, 89 and 88% are extremely good scores 
put it into the very good category. So that was the Noble Check Tech review of the iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus, getting very good scores from us here at Notebook Check. Don't forget to check out the full review on the website, notebookcheck.net for the English, notebookcheck.com. We have the German version there as well. Don't forget to subscribe to these videos because you'll get early notification of some of the lab test results uh, and um, our review information before that goes up on the English website. So you get a little head start if you subscribe to the videos here. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you on another Notebook Check Tech Review.